Shepard, I thought we could experience an afternoon of acquiring material possessions for our associates. Shopping? I guess we could. Did you have a place in mind? Physical proximity is unnecessary. The extranet provides a greater variety of services while retaining entertainment value. Jeff has lent me his credit chit on the condition that I enjoy myself and, quote, live it up like a girly girl. Huh. You don't have money of your own? I am not formally employed. I have no legal standing in Citadel space. I could turn to crime, but that would look bad on a resume. We'll get you your own fun sometime, but today, what's first? I believe Jeff would be surprised and pleased if I got him a gift. What would you recommend? Uh, start with something both of you can enjoy. What do you do together? We interact most closely when we are flying. It occurs to me that he does not have a sky car for traveling around the Presidium. Here, the 2187 Blackout has a top speed of 650 kilometers per hour, making it the most powerful sports sky car in its class. That sounds like it'll get Joker's blood pumping. Five-year warranty? Replacement parts? No, wait! I fail to see what is wrong. When you buy someone a present, it's best not to bankrupt them. You want a rental. I see. Perhaps for a day or a weekend, then. Who's next? You are. Close your eyes. Uh, are we getting married? No. There is a jeweler on the Citadel who produces these. They're made from metals from each Council homeworld. Each metal compounds with the last, making the rings stronger. He calls them victory rings. Due to material shortages, only a few exist. Hmm. Rare is nice. Unique is better. Are you... Valuing me? It's the thought that counts. And you had a good one. I have heard that expression. That's why I recorded a resonance map of my quantum bit arrays when I had the idea. If you read my extensive log files and extrapolate from my nitrogen vacancy centers, you can visualize the thought precisely. That's a long way for a joke, Edie. Did I have you for a few seconds there? <sighs> Not even close. Who's next? I was thinking of something for Liara. Miranda, good to see you. How do you like the place? Not a part of town I'd normally associate you with, Shepard. I like it. Or fix me something while you're back there, would you? Sure, I'll get just the thing. So what brings you back? I was hearing some confusing reports. It sounded like you had lost your mind. No doubt. My communications were hacked, among other things. I'm sure the news had a field day. <laughs> it did. So, a clone? Yeah. Saw it myself. Did you know anything about this? Just rumors. Nothing really caught my attention. But about this Brooks... Heard anything? Not as Brooks, but as Hope Lilium. Another lie, certainly. When the Collectors showed up, she put together the dossiers on your crew for the elusive man. Never paid her much mind. Interesting. My focus at the time was bringing you back. We needed the real Shepard, not some cheap knockoff. I mean, really. A clone? Yes. Hard to imagine. I'm not sure the galaxy could survive two Shepherds. Think of the property damage. Oh, they shut down my favorite sushi place. That's a 
shame. Shepard, you didn't. I did. Fell right through the fish tank. How did you manage that? It exploded. Hey, it was the clone's plan, not mine. Blowing up a fish tank shouldn't be part of anyone's plan. Although executing marine life seems to be some sort of hobby with you. No wonder your clone couldn't resist. It was the first step in taking over my whole life. We stopped it. Good thing, but why did it want your life? Why would anyone? All that running, jumping, gunfire. It's crazy. I try not to think about it. Probably for the best. <laughs> Trust me, I know all this isn't normal. Speaking of trust, with all this clone business, how do I know you're the real Shepard? I don't know, you just do. Do I? That's the trouble with clones. You can never be sure. Come on, you rebuilt me from almost nothing. Don't you recognize your own handiwork? It's not as if I carved my initials in the corner. Well, clone or not, I'm the only Shepard left. Good point. I guess I'm stuck with you. I do have a crazy life, don't I? That you do, my friend. That you do. You sure you want to leave that here? I can't very well bring it back to the Normandy. I'd have nowhere to put it. This place is amazing. Puts the prefabs back on Horizon to shame. And it has a hot tub. Go ahead. Cheers! Oh, this is lovely. And good for the sinuses. I might not even need my antihistamine tonight. Your what? It's a pill. I'm allergic to dust. And cats. And public speaking. I take a proton pump inhibitor for my stomach, too. And an inhaler for asthma. Do you have everything you need to stay healthy? Just about. The only medication I can't find is sucrocapsinol. My family doctor prescribed it for my headaches. Sucrocapsinol? That's a sugar pill trainer, a placebo. Oh, that sneaky bastard. And now that you've told me, it probably wouldn't work anyway. There was some scented bath oil out there somewhere. Could you grab it? Yeah, here you go. Thanks. Eyes are over here and up here. <laughs> hey, do you have a loofah? A loofah. This is Anderson's apartment, remember? I highly doubt he has a... Uh... Found one! Somebody left an overnight bag with toiletries and massage oils and... You know, girly stuff. Do you know who Kay Sanders is? She has great taste in adjustable massage ones. Hey, got any plans for the evening? No. I'm as free as the dust in the solar wind. You remember that line? From Fleet and Flotilla? Shalai and Bellicus on the balcony? Well, I don't think I've ever seen that vid. What? You've never? How could you not have? Well, I know what we're doing tonight. What shall I? 
We can never be together. I have my duty, and you have your people. Not tonight. Tonight, I'm as free as the dust in the solar wind. So you watch this a lot, huh? Every time my friends and I had a sleepover. Kila. So many feelings. Yeah, it's, um... Yeah, definitely. When this is done, I'll send you links to extranet sites with some captioned animations. I want you to see behind this mask. I want you to see who I truly am. I already have. She had an infection for three weeks after filming this scene. Totally worth it. Hey, Lola. Nice place. Might not look so nice after throwing that party you were talking about. You wouldn't trash my new apartment, would you, James? Me? No. Never. <whistles> nice view. But this place, it's just so... not what I'm used to. Which is? I grew up on the beach on the Pacific, so, you know, water, sand, real air. You miss it? Yeah. And the people. So, what's her name? <laughs> no. No. I stopped fraternizing when I joined the military. The two don't seem to go well together. Hasn't stopped you from being a shameless flirt. Yeah, well, that's just my way. I don't mean anything by it, Lola. Too bad. Ha! Who's the shameless flirt now? So you can give it, but you can't take it. No. I just... You're my commander, por Dios. <laughs> I can never tell if you're yanking my chain or not. You can't tell me you haven't been with anyone since you joined the military. Nothing serious. But I'm still flesh and blood, if you know what I mean. Oh, I know, James. All too well. Um... Uh-huh. You don't like what you see. What? No, you're... I'm totally... It's just... What would it take to convince you, James? Uh... I think I need to forget you were Commander Shepard, for starters. I see. Well, now that you've shot me down, was there anything else you came here to talk about? Oh, shit. Right. I wanted to show you. What do you think? Looks good. And you've earned it. Now the real work begins, right? Exactly. And I heard what you said before. And I'm in. Cien por ciento. Glad to hear it. Anyway, that's it. Just wanted to show you that bad boy. I gotta get back to the Normandy. Esteban wants my help working on the shuttle. Thanks for coming by, James. This is gonna be a perfect place for a fiesta. Hasta la vista, Shepard. Catch you later, Shep. What the hell? No way. You've been holding out on me.
Oh, man. <clears throat> this is sweet. <clears throat> Come on. Let me just use it for a bit. <clears throat> this is high-quality stuff. <clears throat> Maybe I could, you know... <clears throat> Come here for my workouts. <clears throat> what do you think? <clears throat> hey, Shepard. You know, my record is 182. You think you can beat it? Maybe. Oh, this should be good. Not bad. You look like a pro. Shut up, Vega. Touchy, touchy. That's 20. That's it, come on. Got a front row seat to the gun show. Keep it up, amigo. Funny. 
Make it burn. Don't lose your focus. You done? We are gathered here to honor the life of Thane Krios. Thane touched each of our lives in different ways. The Counselor knew him as a hero. The Normandy's crew knew him as a brother in arms. And others as a father devoted to his son. Though his life took him to very dark places, Thane cared for the better angels of our nature. He once said that he first felt love for his wife when she stepped in front of an assassin to save someone she didn't even know. And when he knew his death was close, he chose to die doing nearly the same thing. Also for someone he didn't even know. Just as he loved his wife for it, I still love him for it. And I don't think that will ever change. Would anyone else like to speak? What I remember about Thane was his confidence. He told me once about how he remembered everything, even every mistake he made. If I did that, I'd be a nervous wreck. Thane kept it under control. It's strange, but the last word I'd label Thane with is assassin. And we covered each other in firefights. That makes him a partner. Thane's last stand was important. But let us also remember why Thane left the Normandy to keep his son away from a life of crime. Deeds such as these do not go unnoticed by the universe. They echo in all who hear them. 
That is why I am here. Dane took himself seriously, a trait with which I did not always agree. I tried to make him laugh on several occasions, but what I interpreted as a lack of humor was masking a great effort. Thane was turning his life around, in a way few organics do. The day Thane came onto the Normandy, all Kelly and I knew about him was that he could probably kill us all with a ballpoint pen. But after you got to know him, there wasn't any reason to be afraid. He let you know where you stood. Kolyat, do you, uh... When I was little, I thought my father had it all figured out. He said men must be loyal to their friends and dangerous to their enemies. But when he prevented me from, from hurting someone, he had changed. He said enemies and ego are not as important as loved ones. I didn't want to hear it. I was lost. I called him a hypocrite in a thousand different ways, said that he was going soft. Now, I think maybe he did have it all figured out. That's all I can say. If anyone would like to continue, we'll be here. Looks like people are starting to clear out. Commander, thank you for holding this event. In time, it will be a good memory. I don't know if I'll be as philosophical about it. It's still kind of raw. I understand. If you will excuse me, I should take this opportunity to speak with the counselor. About what? He is feeling grateful, and I want to point out there are some Solarian biologists who need funding. If anyone would be able to create a breakthrough in the treatment of Keppel's syndrome, it would be them. If you need someone to hold the counselor's feet to a fire, I'm there. I appreciate the offer, but Counselor Valorn has recently orated about funding science during wartime. My odds are good. Oh, before I go, I was organizing my father's possessions and I came upon copies of video messages he tried to send you. I sent them to your extranet address. I hope they help more than they hurt. Until we meet again, Commander. Visible, Jeff? Huh. 
I believe Jeff would be surprised and pleased if I got... I'd go... Because of... I'm sorry. What about a lower... Sold. Who's next? You are... Uh, are we getting married? No. There is a jeweler on the city. Each metal compounds with the last, making the rings stronger. He calls them victory rings. Due to material shortages, only a few exist. Well, that's thoughtful, Edie. But we're not supposed to wear fancy jewelry with the uniform. Some soldiers put rings on the chain of their identification tags. I can do that. One condition, though. I'll give it back to you when we win. No, that seems inappropriate. It doesn't solely represent my hope. It's that of many different plans. Hmm. Thank you. 